one of the oldest tests that we have in our diagnostic uh, tools is the lumbar puncture. This is a test where we analyze the cerebrospinal fluid. As of the moment, it is the only way we can analyze cerebrospinal fluid, which we do if we are looking for infections of the central nervous system. That is really one of the main purposes for the lumbar puncture. It can also detect blood in the CSF. However, this test is operator dependent, meaning it is the physician who has to insert a needle between L3 and L4. Okay. Next test is your angiogram. Your angiogram is a whole set of different uh, Test. There are many types of angiogram, but its main purpose is to see the status of the blood vessels. The MRI and CT scan cannot see the status of blood vessel, but only the angiogram. The first angiogram that came out was the carotid angiogram. Okay, This was done uh, with the use of a x-ray, but you have a rapid slide changer for the cassettes, for the x-ray cassettes. So you have to insert a needle carotid angiogram through your carotid artery and you have to inject the dye and you take a rapid sequence x-rays to see the blood vessels as the dye will highlight it. This did not show the details so clearly and looking at the carotid angiogram, you can only hit the carotid arteries. You have to do another test for the vertebral which is quite difficult technically. After that came the four-vessel digital subtraction and geography, and four-vessel now will mean the two carotid arteries and the two vertebral arteries. Okay, this one was clearer, and you could actually access through the femoral artery. So you access it in the groin through the femoral artery, and you can access these four blood vessels. After that, they developed magnetic resonance angiogram, which uses the very same MRI machine. And later on, the CT angiogram also came out. And these are non-invasive procedures as compared to your carotid and four vessel subtraction angiographies. So these are just some pictures of your angiograms. In the, this picture here, it's actually a carotid angiogram, and you can see the carotid artery over here and all of its branches. This area is an accumulation of blood vessels. That's your arteriovenous malformation. Same thing over here, okay? So this can be seen with a carotid angiogram. Aneurysms are also seen easily in your angiograms. This is a picture of a four-vessel digital subtraction angiography. So you see here, this is your C-arm that can rotate. And so that you don't have to move the patient, you just rotate the C-arm to be able to get the different uh, pictures that you want to get. Again, as I said, you insert it through the femoral femoral artery so you go course it through the aorta until you can access the four vessels and therefore take your shot so this is how the picture will look like okay it's more refined than the carotid angiogram the ct angiogram practically is what is used most often now and right now people can go into surgery just with the CT angiogram. In the past, they would always need a confirmatory four-vessel angiogram. See, the advantage of a CT angiogram is that you just go into the scanner. You just have to put the contrast. There is no extra procedure done, and it is the computer that will be the one to reconstruct these arteries. So here with a four vessel angiogram, you can see uh, it doesn't look 
so uh, so well, but you reconstruct it, and this is what you see. With 3D reconstruction, you can see here how you can really look at the circle of wheelies, okay? And you can even superimpose it on the skull. In this picture here, you can see that the arteries are superimposed on the skull. You have the posterior circulation over here and the anterior circulation over here. So you see how nice your CT angiogram 3D reconstruction uh, can become. You can even uh, turn this around to look at it in different aspects. The magnetic resonance angiogram came ahead of the mag CT angiogram. Here you can see it also is a very clear picture, but the bone reconstruction is not as good as CT angiogram. You can now do a composite between functional MRI and angiography. So here you see the blood vessels in red, and you can see actually also the white matter tracks. I'll discuss the white matter tracks imaging in a while. This is the MRI application that can you look at the white matter tracks. So what you see here are white matter tracks and this is called diffusion tractography. So diffusion tractography, which is MRI based, can look, trace the white matter tracks. This is a corpus callosum over here, looking at the white matter tracks by diffusion tractography, and that's how it looks. With the current technology, we can now use all of that to do brain mapping. Okay? Brain mapping is very good in trying to understand the function of the brain. Okay? So we can look at the metabolic demands of different areas of the brain as the patient is asked to do certain things. And we, can, we now know what, where or what structures are working. So these are just some examples of brain maps. And EEG is also used uh, in these brain maps to try to reconstruct areas of function. This is functional MRI over here. This is looking at EEG.